Hi baby cakes, I've decided to talk about this, I wasn't going to when I first saw the video and gathered my thoughts about the video and its contents, I really felt strongly against the idea of making this video because I don't know if you guys have noticed but in the entire time I've been on YouTube I have never, never name dropped a single person who's actually in the YouTube witchy pagan and spiritual community unless it was to recommend their channel because they are fucking awesome. <laughs> I have no interest in talking about anyone in any other context. It's not who I am, it's not how I roll. So I thought long and hard about whether or not to talk about this because it does involve referring to somebody in a different kind of context, talking about their life choice and it relates to the negativity that a lot of people feel when somebody makes a life choice like this. Um, when someone goes in a specific direction and chooses to talk about it and frame it in a specific way, obviously that is not the same as saying go and check this person's channel out, they're so amazing and I just like to keep things very high vibe when I talk about other people. I don't want to give any other crap space on my channel my channel is not for that um, obviously I made a video about Doreen Virtue when she converted to Christianity um, I don't consider Doreen Virtue to be a part of this community in terms of like someone that I've actually spoken to that I've interacted with that I know that other people have interacted with who was actually a professional colleague of mine in the industry a full-time card slinger who had a dedicated audience someone who was woven into the fabric of this community. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about where I always decided from day one that I was not going to stop and sling shit at anyone and I was not going to talk about anyone's decisions or anyone's beliefs um, whatsoever because it, it's not constructive. I have decided however that in this particular case it is constructive and it is something that we do need to talk about more as a community or that certain people need to feel like they have a place where they can go to talk about it and that was made abundantly clear yesterday when I left a post on my Facebook uh, page uh, which if you don't follow my Facebook page you can find it down below I left a post talking about how it is natural to feel difficult feelings and fraught emotions coming up when someone uh, in the community whom you trusted and purchased readings from and you held similar beliefs to them suddenly turns around and says I'm Christian now and I don't believe that anything I did was godly um, you know and I, I, I believe things that I did were demonic like obviously it's natural to feel feelings about that and the post that I put on Facebook was about not allowing other people to shame you if you are having some difficult feelings about the transition of this particular person in the community and I noticed that there was a lot of different comments underneath that post and a lot of people thanking me for holding some kind of community space um, for people to get together and talk about this. So I'm actually going to leave the link to that specific Facebook post down below if you want to go and read some of the comments and you want to read what I said. I'm also making this video because I realised in my heart of hearts, right, that if I turned around suddenly one day and I converted to Christianity and I, you know, sort of uh, disappeared from the community for a while and then came back with this testimonial where I was like guys I'm a Christian now and I truly believe that my relationship I had before with the goddess was demonic there's no way that I would get away with not being name dropped in videos by people like people would want to make videos about that that would matter to people that would affect people and so I thought to myself well you know I like Elise and I've had interactions with Elise before and I've recommended Elise's channel on my channel before and I always wanted to get a reading from Elise quite frankly but I don't purchase readings for myself super regularly but she was on my list of people I wanted to get a reading from and um, I considered her to be an esteemed colleague and I was really impressed with the way she built her business, the way she built her audience and the way she handled herself uh, when various different situations arose where she had an opportunity to handle herself with love and grace and maturity and she did. So I have no problem with Elise on a personal level um, as she was always someone that I, I admired and I was shocked when I saw the conversion video I must admit but that respect that I have for her and that appreciation that I have for her as a human being um, you know my respect for what she's done in the new age community etc doesn't really offset the fact that when somebody brings out a conversion video like this a testimonial video like this it does jar the community and I do think that it is something that it's clear that I want to talk about otherwise I wouldn't be here using one of my own only three hours of today. I'm very, very busy today. I've got a lot to do and I really could do with just relaxing before my first client, but I'm here. So obviously I feel like it's important enough um, to talk about it. If you don't know who Elise is, she had a business and a YouTube channel called Wild Moon Woman and the YouTube channel is still there, but 
all of the stuff has been removed from it and there was a plethora of videos amazing card pulls great information ideas about you know healing and shadow work and all the kind of shit that i love the kind of shit that i'm here for um the kind of shit that i've basically been going around trying to convince other people to get into and talk about for like six years on youtube right so i really enjoyed watching her channel and i did used to go back and re-watch videos of hers as well um and basically there's only one video on that channel now and it is her testimonial she has moved on from her witchy path her tarot path she has uh, denounced everything that she did before um, as I suppose heresy <laughs> or ungodly darling and um, she's basically having a relationship with with Jesus right um, she's become Christian and um, she's following the Bible and, and all the rest of it and uh, so that's what I'm talking about basically today I've decided that it's worth having a conversation about it I'm interested to, to hear other points of view on it and there's some things that I want to say okay there's another woman in the community whose channel is Cackling Moon and oh my goddess I love the Cackling Moon channel it's amazing and Rose is the person who runs the Cackling Moon channel and she made a video a week or two ago um, talking about her feelings her, her feelings regarding Elise's conversion and the fact that Elise was very much using her Instagram platform to kind of change everything up and um, say that Christ is the only way and a relationship with God is the only right path and Rose had to unfollow Elise at that point because it was just so triggering and it really was bringing up a lot of things for for Rose that she's worked very hard to get over and get through and get away from you know um, so she made a video talking about that and I will leave that video down below it really is a very honest and raw account of her response to this conversation version taking place her shock and her sadness I'm sorry somebody started drilling outside guys but I have no time to leave the camera and come back to this I've got to do it because it's the only time of the day I have to do it <sighs> and also I hope he stopped by the time I start trying to film my first client reading because that's uh, DIY and being a pro tarot reader guys it's it's a never-ending struggle to be honest it's an occupational hazard rose's video was a very honest very raw account of her feelings about watching someone in the community whose work she respected and who she's actually personally met you know elise read tarot for her husband on one occasion um so it's her raw response to seeing elise saying some of the things that she's saying and rose's point of view was that you know she's not angry with elise for finding a new path she's not pissed off that elise has found a paradigm that she vibes with more and that is right for her for this point in life um, what always hurts and disappoints her is when people who find their way to um, you know a Christian path really feel the the need and the obligation to denounce everything they believed before as ungodly as wrong as demonic as dangerous as evil um, and obviously like yeah that is a disappointment and it's going to be more disappointing for people who were raised within Christian dogma and Christian fundamentalist dogma who were told day after day after day this is what you believe otherwise you're hellbound this is what's right and this is what's wrong by the standard of god otherwise demons are going to surround you and pull you into the seventh layer of like yeah it's it's irritating and saddening i'm sure when you come from that kind of history and you've had to do so much work to free yourself from the tyranny of that dogma um, to then find that one of the people whose work you admire, who has a following, who has a full-time spiritual business is turning around telling you, you know, Christ is the only way and I've only been able to free myself through Christ and Christ alone. I'm sure, yeah, that that, that is... <laughs> I'm sure that doesn't make for the best day of your life. The main thing that I want to say in this video is that obviously I've been around a few times, darling. I've been around the block... I've been in the spiritual community for a while now, as you may have noticed, okay? I'm a bit of a fossil in the spiritual community now. And I've seen this happen a few times with various different degrees of fallout and people that had larger subscriber counts and people that didn't. Um, I rarely have seen it from anybody who actually had a full-time spiritual business, I must say. Um, so that, that's that been interesting to watch somebody with quite an established following who I know through cards full-time actually convert to Christianity in this way. That's been, that's been interesting to watch that's been a very popcorn munching kind of time for me I must say um, so I've seen this kind of thing happen and I've noticed that what invariably happens as a result of it is that there are lots of people who are not bothered at all by someone coming out with a testimonial they're not bothered by somebody's spiritual change of heart and you saw this with the Doreen Virtue situation where every time you scrolled into the comments section underneath a video you would find people saying I don't even know why you're bothered I don't even know why you're making a video about it 
it who cares okay Doreen's not interested in this path anymore it doesn't matter a dime it shouldn't matter a jot to you just get on with what you're doing blah 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 and um, I find that kind of response to be so rigid and short-sighted and I think it's lovely if you personally don't have any issue with someone whose work you followed and whose business you invested into turning around and telling you that your beliefs are demonic or they're ungodly. I think it's amazing if you don't personally have a problem with that but the fact that you cannot see your way to at least trying to understand why other people might be hurt by that I think he's just really short-sighted and maybe it's just coming from a counselling perspective for me because I'm a full-time spiritual counsellor and I'm a card slinger my daily my day-to-day -day bread and butter is helping people a lot of whom are on an alternative spiritual journey most of whom in fact are on an alternative spiritual journey I have come across a lot of people who have tried to unpack the dogma that they were raised with and unpick the conditioning that they labour under I have met a lot of people who were told for years and years and years that they would be hellbound if they did not conform to the beliefs that were set out for them by the Christian culture that they inhabited, the Christian family that they were a part of. And it has taken years in some cases for people to free themselves enough to actually be able to express themselves spiritually and otherwise the way that they want to. And bear in mind that when you do this, when you leave Christianity like that, that kind of Christianity which is dogmatic and which is rigid and which says this is the only way, you very often often lose family members as a result of that you lose friends as a result of that marriages fucking break down as a result of that okay it's not an easy path so when you find your way into new age thinking neo-pagan thinking you become a witch and um, you start watching YouTube videos and learning and going on your authentic spiritual journey yes it is sometimes jarring when someone whose work you admire whose business you have patronized or who's otherwise made a positive impact on you turns around and starts to say some of those things that you are naturally going to feel triggered by that you've done so much work to unhinge yourself from yes it is jarring I really feel like people who come along and write things like oh I don't know why you bothered it's her personal journey no judgment just carry on with what you're doing it's like well actually people are usually responding to the judgment that has been pushed upon them by the person who is converted and the person who's now turning around saying you know your beliefs are demonic your beliefs are in fact evil so I think it's great for you if it doesn't bother you but please try to at least if you can't hold space for people who are affected please at least try and be silent instead of patronizing somebody into being okay with something that obviously has triggered them for I think pretty obvious reasons. To be clear, I am happy for Elise. I am always happy for anyone who has experienced a massive paradigm shift on their spiritual journey, which they are gushing over, which they are super excited about and very hyped for, that's making them feel like everything is shiny and new and cool and they're excited, right? I love that, I love that energy. I vibe off of that energy. I think that's really awesome. And in my line of work and with the people I hang out with online, I see that a lot. I see people being like, I've just realized this thing or I've just started communing with this deity and mind blown guys mind blown and I love that that I'm here for that all right I like seeing people happy and I like seeing people spiritually pumped so I'm not um I'm not trying to take any anything away from Elise in that way uh what really disappoints me in terms of the damage that I know that it can do is the the format of the testimonial um the testimonial is a funny little thing isn't it you know we don't really make them in the new age when we when we come out from under the christian umbrella and and just for clarification i never did i was never raised christian um but when people come out from under the christian umbrella which is very rigid very more on the fundamentalist side where you are not given the right to have your own spiritual thoughts and feelings um they don't normally go into the new age and make a testimonial for other Christians to watch which acts as a little bit of a kind of propaganda machine to get people out of the Christian church and I do think that's what a testimonial is for a testimonial is almost a way to please your new Christian family and of course your new Christian God um, by showing all of the the naughty little heathens that you used to hang out with um, the right way you know it's like you're opening the door for them to come through and also follow you towards the right way um, I know that that is why people enc are encouraged to make testimonials or at least that's one of the reasons why newly converted Christians who were new age or were witches 
are asked and encouraged to make testimonials because it really almost strengthens the message that these paths are wrong and they're a bunch of demonic BS and this is the right way, this is the pure way, you know, show people that you found the right way, open the door for others to come to Christ. Maybe we should start making new age testimonials of this kind of ilk, maybe we should literally make testimonials where we sit there and we're like, I was raised under the paralyzing dogma of the Christian regime and I was terrified of going to hell, you know, I once wet myself as a kid because I was so terrified that Satan was outside but it was just a strong wind and now I get to hang out and with all kinds of different gods and be creative as fuck and I feel wonderful. Maybe we should make testimonials like that, I don't know. Um, but the reason that we don't is because we are not interested in trying to pressure anyone, convert anyone, tell anyone what to do. And that's why you don't find this whole plethora of videos that have a specific title which we know are geared towards showing Christians the right way. This is why we don't do testimonials because you know, the, the reason a lot of us left the, the Christian faith and the Christian dogma in the first place is because we don't understand why there needs to be spiritual rigidity. We don't understand the concept of there being one right way. We find that to be rigid and actually also sometimes cruel and abusive and definitely repressive and restrictive, right? So that's why we don't make testimonials. So whenever someone who was a witch, who was new age, and especially someone who owned a business and had quite a sizable following makes a testimonial, that sticks in the back of my throat, particularly because nine times out of ten, when somebody makes a testimonial, they're going to talk about their experiences and their beliefs in a specific way. And it is going to be in a way that seeks to undermine all of their previous beliefs, which everybody watching the testimonial still holds. So, yeah, it creates weird feelings inside, you know? Even if it doesn't create angry feelings, and I suppose there was a little bit of anger from my point of view, but not much, um, even if it doesn't create very strong feelings, it creates a feeling of fucking weirdness. And I can tell you, I definitely had a feeling of fucking weirdness watching Elise's conversion video, just putting it out there. People who make testimonials talking about their previous New Age beliefs and their previous witchy beliefs and how they've turned away from it all, very often betray the fact that they invariably didn't really understand fully a lot of the stuff that they previously were into anyway and I think I've said this on the channel before that like whenever I see conversion videos online on YouTube where someone is saying oh I was a witch and you know it was terrible and then I moved to Christianity and now I'm so free and so I feel so good um, their story always betrays to me very clearly that they were never really the kind of person that was supposed to be into witchcraft in the first place like they went into it for reasons that were not really conducive to having a meaningful path. Um, they went towards it for reasons of wanting money or wanting sex or wanting power over somebody. You know, all the stuff that's basically a big red flag for true witches who came to the path for reasons that are way more healthy and way more holistic and way more realistic and just way more psychologically stable. <laughs> Sometimes I think that people who were in the New Age movement and then convert to Christianity and reject their former beliefs did actually have a deep understanding of their former beliefs, but they've boiled it down in the testimonial as though it meant nothing or as though it was really harmful. Um, like in Elise's testimonial, for example, she says that, um, you know, she's realised in moving over to Christianity that in the new age, you know, everything is considered to be good and everything is considered to be okay to mess around with. And, you know, you, we're supposed to like go towards everything and everything has equal worth. And, um, you know, then when she moved to Christianity, she realised like, no, there is evil in the world. There is bad stuff stuff in the world. And first of all, this this to me is a massive boiling down of what her previous beliefs were supposed to have been. And don't forget, I watched hours of her videos. Um, and second of all, it betrays a fundamental misunderstanding so, so much of some of the things that she used to talk about, like, for example, shadow work. Um, you know, if you really truly understand shadow work, then surely you understand that the idea of good and evil that exists in the Christian dogma is really just um, a way of responding to the human shadow. And uh, it's not a very healthy way, in my opinion, of responding to it. It induces fear about looking into the darker side of the human condition. And as somebody mentioned in the comments underneath my Facebook post about this yesterday, I do think that lots of people who leave the new age in favour of a kind of fundamentalist flavoured Christianity are actually afraid of exploring the darker side and I think that they that Christianity then becomes almost a kind of excuse um, for them to have that fear. It's like well it's demons 
you know, we need to keep away from them. We need to lock that door. Everything I'm afraid of, everything that goes bump in the night, everything that freaks me out at 3 a.m. when I'm alone, everything that makes me want to cry, everything that makes me want to run away, uh, all of that shit is demons, you know? I just need to surrender to Christ and I need to keep away from the demons. To me, that is a massive boiling down and a massive oversimplification oversimplific of something that people in the new age and in the psycho-spiritual community seek to be much more nuanced about and much more, I would say, sensitive about to be honest with you but anyway my point I suppose because I've strayed from my point a little bit but my point is that lots of people who turn around and say my witchy beliefs were crap my new age beliefs were bullshit really show me that they didn't actually understand those beliefs or they were they were not very clued up on them or they never really should have been involved with them in the first place and that's one of the things that actually soothes me because honestly pretty much every testimonial I've ever watched um, from someone denouncing their witchy path I've thought to myself oh you were probably never really supposed to be on the witchy path to be honest if that's the kind of thing you thought it was about or if that's the kind of thing you thought it was going to facilitate inside of you you were never going to get what you wanted out of it you were never going to find what you were seeking because that's not how this shit works and that's not how it's supposed to be so it's probably best that you you know off you pop basically it's it's not the path for you you are right you know enjoy your time with christ christ is probably a better fit for you kind of thing another thing that i notice about testimonials a lot of the time is that someone who has converted from their new age beliefs to their christian beliefs and who sees this as a very positive thing for them has ultimately decided that what was bad for them and damaging for them was bad and damaging for everyone else um, they cannot see a difference between the two and I know that the Christian framework is set up so that people can't see a difference between the two like you have to believe really in most areas of Christianity um, you have to believe that other beliefs are not the way and that other beliefs lead to a bad place and they lead to hell and they lead to people being very damaged so when you watch a testimonial it can be very frustrating because you recognize that the person making the testimonial is talking about how you know their relationship with goddesses was unfulfilling and they never got what they wanted from tarot and they couldn't serve their clients properly with tarot and the path was all wrong all wrong all wrong but they never ever make the caveat that they're talking only about themselves they never say like I fully believe that it could be right for others or it could be nurturing for others but it wasn't for me and that is because when you move into a mainstream sort of Christian community framework you're not allowed to believe that new age paths could be good for other people you know you ultimately have to believe that Christ is the only way and everyone else is wrong so testimonials can be super frustrating for that reason as well um, it's, it's so chilling to see somebody talk about the ways in which they were dissatisfied on the new age path, but very strongly imply at the same time, or even sometimes explicitly state that it's also wrong for everyone else. It's also not the right way for everyone else. I'm sorry for Elise and for people like Elise if they feel like they were banging their head against a brick wall trying to have relationships with goddesses or read tarot or whatever. Um, if they feel like they wasted their time, if they feel ashamed of themselves now, um, if they feel like they wish they could scrub it all out which Elise obviously does because she's deleted all of her videos which I think is a huge shame um I'm sorry for those people but for me it is nurturing and for me my relationships with my goddesses are HD up close and personal and for me tarot is an incredible tool and for me my life is better so you know when I see testimonials that seek to almost convince me that my path is also not nurturing or not tasty I think to myself it might not have been for you and you might not have gotten to where I've gotten but I'm there and you know Christ has got nothing to offer me where I am now like it's literally you literally would be asking me to leave like the most amazing fucking warehouse party of my entire life to go and sit in like you know a fucking four by eight cell and just read one book forever that's how it would feel to me like no uh th this advert has not worked this commercial has not been effective darling i'm much happier where i am thank you <laughs> I really appreciated that as part of Elise's testimonial she did mention that she very much hopes that she did not hurt any of her clients by reading tarot for them by slinging cards and giving advice and all that kind of thing she hopes that she didn't do any damage which obviously coming from her new Christian perspective and her new Christian paradigm she would be concerned about um, I think she probably does feel some degree of shame or worry about the things that she was involved in um, and she probably does worry about whether or not she did harm anybody by slinging cards 
cards for them. Um, I feel fairly fucking certain that she did not harm anybody by slinging cards for them. And from everything that I remember about her channel and her content and the way that she presented herself, I know that she did a lot of good for a lot of people and she brought a lot of nurturing to the community and helped a lot of people to dive into things that they hadn't explored before. She was a proponent of inner child work and shadow work and stuff that I know has had a very, very um, positive benefit on so many people's lives. I do think what might be harmful, though, um, is to put a testimonial up on your channel that has links in the down bar to websites that you suggest that your former clientele and your former audience go and check out if they want to know more. And some of the stuff on there is homophobic, you know? Um, it's talking about all of these standards that God has for what is forbidden, um, you know, that same-sex attraction is forbidden and all that kind of jazz. I do think that's damaging. I do think that's not okay. I do think if you had a community that accepted you, that connected with you, and not only that, but a clientele who paid your rent for you and gave you amazing feedback, I do think if you had all of that, then if you want to convert to Christ and if you want to convert to a flavour of Christianity which is homophobic and doesn't accept different lifestyles and different orientations and different ways of being, then go silently. Go silently. Don't, don't ask people to click on links where they're going to see this repulsive hate-induced, unscientific silliness and waste. Like, honestly, honestly, you know, if you have any respect for what was built, for what was established, for what you were given, for the belief that was invested in you and the love, don't do that. That's my opinion. That, that would have been what I would have done. If I was really, really concerned about not hurting um, my audience and if I was worried about hurting my former clientele, if I was concerned about the actions that I took that may have harmed them, my decision would be to walk away without um, giving a testimonial where I actually direct people to homophobic, hateful websites just my point of view. I believe that most things can be explained by human psychology. Um, that's just the way that I roll. That's just what I've kind of discovered and the way that my life has worked so far. Um, and to me, you know, when I was listening to Elise's testimonial and I listened to it twice and I sat with it and I wrote some notes about things I was thinking and feeling, um, you know, because she was a colleague of mine in the industry for a long time and she had a really popular channel. So I was really like jarred and taken aback by this. Um, and to me, when she was explaining in her testimonial her issues throughout her life, her problems with her father and, and um, other men and what she was seeking from men and her very fraught relationship with the masculine and how she came to this point of being, you know, literally at her wit's end and surrendering to Christ in that moment after having what sounds like a series of horrendous breakups with men who, um, you know, undoubtedly some of whom did not behave nicely, I'm sure. Um, it made, it all made sense to me and it's got nothing to do with Christ being the one true way and the one true path it's to do with human need paradigm shifts in spirituality can be mostly pretty clearly explained by where you are in your life and what your needs are um and to me that was just so obvious it's it's so it's so easy isn't it from an outside perspective to look at what someone has gone through and what someone has experienced sometimes and think well this all adds up you know this is what you needed this is what your psychology was crying out for, um, a close working relationship with um, arguably a hyper-masculine God who acts as a father figure to his flock. And then you've got Jesus, like the, the, the God made flesh or whatever, who gives you almost kind of like that intimate um, connection as well, that more earthly connection, that more down to earth connection. If your relationship with the masculine is shot to shit and you've got major man issues and major, you know, leftover dad stuff and everything's coming to a head and you're heartbroken by these, um, these situations you're getting yourself into with men and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to speculate she put this in her testimonial okay so it's out there it's not something I'm speculating on um, then it makes sense that yeah if you're looking for a paradigm shift if things are not working if you're frustrated if you're crying out for spiritual change uh, why not why wouldn't it be the the Jesus paradigm the the Christian paradigm that would come through um, to me it kind of makes sense you know you're going to get the father that you never had and you're going to have a relationship with the masculine that for you at least feels good and feels nurturing and feels probably a lot like what you've been missing all this time that you've been looking for that's been a problem for you that's been a thorn in your side that's been a wound in your psyche um 
so none of this convinces me in any world that it's the one true path um, the reason that Elise feels so high right now and so excited right now is because this path is right for her right now it's right for her right now and no one should have a problem with that and no one does have a problem with that people have a problem with the narrative that is always spun around somebody's conversion of other people needing to convert or be damned you know that's the issue that's where that kind of tone and that kind of language and that kind of all-out dismissal of the beliefs that other people hold so dear um, that is the issue no one has an issue with somebody experiencing a massive spiritual paradigm shift based on what they need in their life at that time and believe me it is human psychology it's got nothing to do with christ the clean-cut hippie boy being the one true path he feels like the one true path for Elise right now, and that makes perfect psychological sense. Um, and that's not me denigrating her path. I'm happy for her um, that that is the way she wants to go. But I am going to talk about the psychological obviousness of it and boil it down when I am faced with a testimonial where I'm being told that, you know, my beliefs are demonic and my beliefs are, you know, not the right way or whatever. I'm definitely going to put forth my analysis of how a person's massive paradigm shift actually makes sense for them as an individual and even though it feels amazing and it feels really significant and it feels like a major high for this person right now as it always does it's got nothing to do with anyone else it's got nothing to do with other witches having a void within them it's got nothing to do with other new age people or mystical people also needing to turn to the word of god and give up everything that they believe and follow christ it's you it's your time to follow christ it's your journey and that's wonderful for you uh for me it would be a spiritual death sentence i would go backwards in so many ways if i was to do that it were the thought of it literally makes my skin crawl it repulses me to be frank i was not able to get all of this actually filmed in half an hour i had half an hour before my first client of the day and um i i just haven't been able to fit all of the points in that i made guys while i was watching this testimonial seriously seriously all of this pink stuff is my notes that i made the things that i wanted to make sure i said so you know what i'm going to turn the camera off and i'm going to come back with a fresh cup of tea and i'm going to keep going at it because there's more that i feel that i want to say okay i am back from speaking with my client for an hour the tea is fresh the candle is fresh i'm ready i'm feeling refreshed so let me carry on so basically where was i yeah i was talking about um the paradigm shift the great big shiny new paradigm shift and how very often uh we bring that in that is a part of human psychology we you know we throw up our hands we throw in the towel we say i can't um you know do this on my own or i can't do this in the the same way I've been doing this or I'm ready for a miracle I'm ready for a change I'm ready for a shift and then I think what comes in is um you know has got a lot to do with where we are in our human psychology the issues that we've had our specific experiences and it can feel so powerful and so vast and so overwhelming that some people convince themselves that it's a panacea for everyone and that it's the answer to all the ills in the world and unfortunately when you are attracted to the Christian framework you're going to be almost inundated with this idea that it is a panacea for all the ills of the world and that it's a pathway that everybody should adopt and everybody should take on because that is part of what it means to be a christian for the vast majority of christians it is about you know making soldiers for god gaining souls for god helping people to turn away from the demonic and the evil and go towards the light path the right path the only path all the stuff that to me just gives me fucking hives it brings me out in a rash it's just uh, I just can't with with that whole thing this idea that that so, that people know beyond doubt that there is this one right way and that's the way it is um like I said I'm not sold I you'd have, uh, it'd have to come with a hell of a lot of fucking glow sticks and bloody LSD vials for me to be interested Elise was saying in her testimonial that you know they say that Jesus is close to the brokenhearted they say that Jesus comes in when you really need him and when you cry out to him there's no doubt that the human psyche can find itself under a great deal of pressure when things are not working when you feel like the same cycle is repeating over and over and over and over again you feel like nothing that you are trying is working personally for you 
and you get to the end of the line and you feel despair and there's also a lot of openness that occurs in the human psyche at that time that pressure that builds and builds and builds makes us incredibly open to different ideas different suggestions different tools and tips that maybe we have turned away from before or maybe we were not necessarily looking at before um, but really that new paradigm that is so markedly different from what you were what you were engaging with in the past that is a psychological balm for you personally as an individual and um, to become convinced that it is the psychological bomb that is going to work for everybody and that indeed your previous beliefs that you held don't work for anyone who holds those beliefs now um, is just so unfortunate I find that really sad I, I feel almost a sense of pity for people that come to that point where just because something wasn't working for them and they found something that works better they just automatically assume that that's what's going to work for everyone I just feel sorry for people that find themselves in that place because it's um you know that's the true place of darkness for me I think another thing that I've noticed when I watch testimonials because obviously this is by no means the first testimonial that I've watched I've watched quite a few testimonials I've watched testimonials from witches before who've deleted their channels and stuff like that uh, like I said I've been around for a while so this is definitely not my first rodeo in this regard um, and another thing that I always notice is that like most people that make a testimonial um, say something very similar to what Elise mentioned in her testimonial, which was that, you know, um, we are not worthy of being of being close to God. We are um, we are nowhere near worthy of being close to God. But he sent his only son to us to clean us, to make us clean is the words that Elise used so that we could have. A relationship with God you know and how how amazing is that that even though we're not worthy even though we are we are unclean we have been cleaned by the sacrifice that you know his only begotten son gave so that we could have this close relationship with God um and that you know what if that's what makes somebody tick if that's what makes somebody's blood buzz then i'm here for it for them that's great go and do what you got to do have that relationship with that god um but every time i hear this rhetoric of like we're unclean we're not worthy um you know we are disobedient we are um we are somehow not uh, not fit to be in the presence of God but for the sacrifice he made of his only son so that we could be close to him even though we don't really deserve it and every time I'm sitting there listening to that kind of rhetoric I'm sipping my tea and I'm thinking to myself it sounds like a bit of a wanker to be honest <laughs> I don't want to hang out with a man with those kinds of attitudes and views in the material or in the celestial I'm crossing the street to avoid men of that ilk okay <laughs> people work so hard and they give so much to their own process of realizing that they are worthy and they don't deserve to feel unclean and they don't deserve to feel like they are being disobedient and disgusting just because they want to explore different things and just because they want to honor their truth people do so much work to get to the point where they fully release themselves from beneath that particular umbrella of psycho spiritual oppression and it does major major damage and i have so much respect for the work that people do coming out from under that umbrella that i absolutely refuse to say that I don't understand why they're upset when this kind of thing happens to them with people within their own community. I refuse to withhold my empathy from people who feel triggered by this or offended by this. Um, it's easy for me and I've said this before I'm in a pretty easy position uh, when it comes to my religious um, background and everything that I've been through and experienced. I was never oppressed by religious dogma. Um, I never had to release myself from a belief system that was drummed into me from the very moment I arrived on earth um, and I never had to pull away from something that was so intrinsic to my entire worldview but that I just couldn't make myself believe I never had to experience all the all the, the pain that goes along with that but I'll tell you something in my line of work I help a lot of people that have had to I have worked with a lot of people and I've watched them cry and I've watched their chins wobble and their faces screw up and I have watched them do that work and I've watched them go to the depths of what it means to have to break free of that stuff and I refuse to withhold empathy from them as they watch a testimonial from a most beloved card slinger or witch that was a part of the community and they feel like oh do we have to talk about how everything I believe is is, is demons 
it's really just demons and you know the demons try to pretty it up and make it attractive so that we don't understand that it's demons like some people work for years to free themselves of that fear and some people are at a very fragile part of the journey right now where they recognize that um, you know that they were essentially being brainwashed and forced into believing something that really did not resonate with them but they are not yet necessarily at the point where they feel completely free of the fear of damnation or the fear that you know every time there's a creak in the door it's a fucking demon this fear is so real it is used to ensure your docility and your servitude you know, it, it's cleverly designed that way. It's not a mistake. The, the fear that is induced by these stories and these ideas is set up to make you feel absolutely petrified, paralysed, unsure of everything that you would think that would, that would even go remotely outside of the framework that you are being forced to sit within. So yeah, naturally I can understand why it's difficult for people when something like this happens. Elise has said that she has received some nasty messages, some abusive messages. Obviously I do not condone that at all. I don't condone that in the least. I think that's really reductive. There's no point in it and I think it's harmful on both sides. She did mention that she did expect to be personal persecuted by the community that she's been a part of. To me, the word persecuted, I mean, look, put it this way, if you have received private messages from people or comments from people that have told you that you are stupid for making this change and they're disgusted by you or whatever, they're angry with you um, and they are calling you names or trying to denigrate you, then obviously, yeah, that feels persecutory and that feels unpleasant. Um, but in terms of using the word persecution, which obviously is quite loaded, it is quite religiously loaded, that word, you know, persecution. Um, Christians are not persecuted in America. Pagans are persecuted persecuted in America. Witches are persecuted in America. Um, America is very much still a Bible bashing Christian country and in many, many corners of that country, in many states in that country, um, witches and pagans are not free. They are not free to have religious expression. They are secretive about what they do. They are worried about their kids talking about it on the playground in case the wrong person finds out and they are disinvited from patronising businesses in the area or maybe their property is destroyed or maybe vicious rumours are spread about them or maybe they lose their job this is a reality for witches and pagans in America. Christians are not persecuted. You have directly walked into the elite social club of America. So persecution, I think, is a little bit of a strong word. I think it's uh, incredibly reductive to send nasty messages to someone who no, no longer shares your religious or spiritual point of view. Um, you know, and if anything, if they have come to believe that the new age is demonic or that witches are of the devil, then you behaving in a really malicious and aggressive way towards them is really only in their mind going to back up the beliefs that they already have about you being shitty and needing to come to Christ. So, you know, if nothing else is going to prevent you from sending someone a shitty message because they've converted, then at least think about how you might be feeding into their toxic narrative about you, you know, and at least allow that to stop you from pressing send or with that nasty message that you uh, you feel like sending their way. But in terms of persecution, you know, somebody who goes from having a new age spiritual journey, a witchy business, someone who's been public uh, with their witchcraft and their goddess worship, etc., to go from that to being a uh, part of a Christian community and part of a Christian framework in America, you know, you're literally going from shit to champagne, really, as far as persecution is involved. You know, you're going to be now about 100% less persecuted. You may find, though, that you do feel feel persecuted against if you continue to hang around the former witchcraft and new age community that you were a part of and attempt to convert them or attempt to bring them to Christ. You may find yourself feeling slightly persecuted if you're going to linger around and bring your evangelical rigid religious energy and religious message to people who do not want to hear it and who just want to be respected for the spiritual views that they hold. Then yes, okay, you may find yourself feeling persecuted. You know, it is best to pack your bags and leave the scene rather than uh, risking it for a biscuit by hanging around and being like, you know, you guys now need to turn to Christ. And I have seen that happen in the past. Um, 
I have seen people actually maintain their former um, kind of their former social media accounts and try to engage their former audience and yeah you know people do get angry about that people do feel that they are owed um, a baseline level of respect and they do not feel that that kind of behavior is respectful and I'm not trying to make any predictions about what Elise specifically is planning on doing I'm just I'm more talking about testimonials and conversions in general when it comes to the witchy community and I have you know seen that happen um I've, I've undoubtedly seen people who very strongly must feel as though they've gathered an audience around their devil worshipping ways and now the best thing to do would be to lead that audience into the flock and it's not the best thing to do it's not the best thing to do it's disrespectful and it is going to draw more negative attention to you and it is going to start to make you feel as though you're having a heap of shit thrown at you but what really is happening is that you're throwing a heap of shit at them and they are really just responding in a defensive manner to you most of the time. I very highly doubt that Elise is going to watch this video. I think it's um, usually pretty unusual for someone who has converted to Christianity from the New Age or the witchcraft uh, area of things to stick around and engage with their former audience and with their former friends that they've made along the way. And I think that can make the people that are bewildered and left behind feel um, even more as though they're being devalued. And I'm not saying that Elise has got a duty to stick around and get into conversations with people. She doesn't have that duty at all. Um, she's made her testimonial, she's come out, she's been honest, she's closed her business down and she's told everybody what she's doing now and what her beliefs are now. Um, and she didn't even owe everybody that really, um, but that's what she's done, that's what she's chosen to do. Um, you know, you are allowed to go off and start a new spiritual life without informing everybody of, you know, all the details of what you're doing. But she chose to, you know, make the testimonial and give her audience an opportunity to understand, like, what is going on for her and what's happening in her life and stuff like that. But I do notice, obviously, quite often that when people convert um, from New Age or witchy to Christianity and they are pretty convinced that all of their former beliefs are, you know, devil worshipy or evil or not of god um that they tend to obviously disengage like they're on their new path now they're on their new journey now and they actually obviously regard a lot of the people that they used to talk to and hang out with online or in reality as being maybe you know people that are high risk to hang out with those people are ungodly those people have not um accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior those people are on the wrong path so it makes sense that someone who's converted is going to disengage it makes sense that they're not necessarily going to stick around and like have conversations there's no point for them they're on to the next phase of the journey and the next phase of the journey not only includes sticking to your own but also includes actively trying to convince new age and witchy people that their beliefs are bullshit so you've gone from being um a friend and an ally and a colleague to being actually um an adversary and you've put yourself in that situation. You've chosen, you know, that that adversarial um, connection by saying like, yeah, you know, I think that when you have a relationship with a goddess, it's really a relationship with a demon. And the demon is just trying to talk you out of doing the right thing. And, you know, I don't think any of this stuff is worth a damn. And I think it's damaging. And, you know, when you say things like that, of course, you're setting yourself up in an adversarial position. And of course, you're not going to want to engage with people that you know are wrong. You know, when you know through and through, all the way through to the core of your soul, that not only are these people wrong, but they are not going to the, they're not going through the fucking pearly gates upon death. They're going down into the fiery pit of hell. Why would you want to stick around and engage with them? And I think it makes people in the witchy and new age community who engage about the differences in spiritual beliefs all day feel really weird and really like abandoned or left behind. Like, oh, well, there's not even a conversation about it now. Okay, well... I guess fair enough, like good luck on your journey darling, <laughs> you know. As I said previously, testimonials are intended to be a promotion tool, a promotional tool for your new religion. They are intended to show people how crappy everything was before, how empty everything was before, how shit everything was before, and how grand and glorious and illuminated and elevated and revelatory everything is now under the instruction of God and walking, you know, beside Jesus. So obviously you are going to denigrate the former spiritual path that you were 
were on and as i said right at the beginning of this video i think that a lot of the time when i hear former witches um, and former new ages talk about their previous beliefs which were so unsatisfactory and so evil and so empty um i often do think to myself well it's a bloody good job really that you didn't continue on that path because you actually have you actually are displaying a very very obvious fundamental lack of understanding of anything that that path is really about as far as i can see um and sometimes I think that that is really a genuine lack of understanding. It's like, wow, you know, you were you were um, dancing with these ideas that, that you really don't seem to actually comprehend. Um, and sometimes I think that it is intentionally denigrating something that really you do understand, but you feel very moved and very obligated to say is useless or not right in some way. So I don't think it's always the case that people that leave the path and denigrate it in favour of Christianity never understood it at all. But I think in a lot of cases, you know, testimonial videos to me have always betrayed that fundamental lack of understanding of the previous path. And I've said that somewhere on the channel at some point I have said that you know i do feel that a lot of former witch testimonials when they talk about why they got into witchcraft or what they were looking for from witchcraft or what they were expecting from witchcraft i think to myself well that was a wrong turn for you really um you were probably never really supposed to be messing with witchcraft if that's the kind of thing that you thought it was about so you probably are best off in the flock as it were i suppose if you're going to be anywhere if you're going to be anywhere, you shouldn't be here, I suppose, dancing with us by the light of the full moon with Satan, you know, obviously. Rose from Cackling Moon said that, you know, she's surrounded all the time by messages about the importance of converting to Christ and the importance of obeying the word and turning away from your evil ways and stuff. She said, you know, I was raised under that tyranny and I'm around that tyranny all the time in my culture. And that's why I can't accompany Elise on the next phase of her journey, because I need to protect myself from that crap that I've done so much to, you know, work to um, restore myself after, you know, and, and to heal from. I got that and I think that makes perfect sense and to me from watching Elise's testimonial I don't think that she's expecting anyone from her former community to come on this new phase of the journey with her um, what I'm expecting is that she's going to want to connect with Christian community if anything and you know I wish her well and I really honestly do not um, you know want any hate to be directed towards her and it makes me sad that she's received messages um, that have sought to denigrate her or make her feel shitty but at the same time I see what a minefield it is when somebody with good standing in the community and an audience around their work comes out with a testimonial like this and denigrates their former beliefs I see how that is damaging to this community and obviously I'm protective of this community I'm an active part of this community I am a full-time business owner in this community with a metaphysical business right so you know, I I feel concern about the way that that affects people and I understand how that might be affecting some people. And I wanted to make that clear in this video, I suppose one of the main reasons I wanted to make it was just to reach out to those people in empathy and to say that sometimes it does feel fucking weird when someone, you know, that you bought readings from and you talk to about goddess stuff comes out and says, you know, I don't think my relationship with the goddess was a relationship with the goddess at all. I think it was wrong. Um, you know, I believe that demons are real. I don't believe we should be messing around with this new age shit. Like, yeah, it, depending on the past that you've had and the things that you've been through and the things that you've tried to heal from personally, that kind of video is going to have an effect on you. And I just wanted to reach out in love um, to everyone who has felt confused and saddened by this and just to say that you know it's normal to have that reaction and it's okay it's okay to have that reaction one thing that i did in the course of this video that i did say at the beginning of the video that i wasn't going to do like i said to myself that i wasn't going to do this and actually i have ended up doing it is that i have offered within the context of this video some beliefs that I have and some analysis that I have about why Elise has ended up turning to Christ and how that makes sense for her on her journey and how it's actually got a degree of psychological obviousness to it from a distance perspective. I wasn't going to talk about that because I don't want to there's obviously so much about Elise or anyone that I don't know do you know what I mean like a testimonial is not the whole animal it's not the whole picture it's not the entire thing 
Um, and far be it from me to sit here like a fucking armchair Freud and be like, well, I'll tell you what's going on with you. You know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be pompous. I don't want to be arrogant like that. I don't want to be superior like that. I don't want to come across that way, right? Um, but I, I have done some analysis of, of Elise's reasons and why she's ended up doing what she's doing and I will leave it in the video but there is a lot more that I have thought about and a lot more that, that has ticked over in my brain box while this has been unfolding which I will not share because actually focusing too much on why a person has done what they've done or why they've turned to the path they've chosen to turn to it's not helpful and as a lot of you guys know if you've been around for any length of time I'm all about bringing things back to self I'm all about thinking about okay well how can I allow this to alchemize me how can I allow this to show me something about where I am with my path or where I um, you know could seek improvement or how I could examine myself and so, you know, when I was like falling into the trap, which I think a lot of psycho spiritually astute people do, right? We fall into the trap of analyzing, analyzing, figuring it out, looking at it, looking at it from a different angle, looking at it from another angle. And I love doing that, right? I could do that all fucking day. But I've, I've, I'm big enough and ugly enough at this point to know when it's not doing me any good and when it's actually pulling me away from the work that I need to do. So I kind of sat there this morning before, you know, coming to make this video and I was thinking, okay well what can this teach me what can i take from this how can i bring this back to self and one of the main things that i thought like the very first thing that jumped into my head was this is a massive opportunity for me to celebrate the fullness and the richness and the joy that my path brings to me this is a chance for me to celebrate the fact that it's highly 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 unlikely that I'm ever going to turn around and look at all this shit and look at my altar and look at my books of shadows and think, I don't know what I was doing. I'm so sad I wasted all this time. I can't believe I wasn't following the one true God. Um, it's a time for me to celebrate the fact that that isn't my story. And I'm happy for Elise that she has found her place and her way. And like I said at the beginning, I'm pumped when people are pumped. Seriously. I think it's sad that it has to come with a side of denigrating what I'm doing. And that's one of the main reasons I made the video, because that is problematic, right? When when we see conversions and testimonials, it so often comes with a big side dollop of you are ungodly. And if you, you know, if you were anything like me, you'd be clever and follow the word, right? That's the problem with it. But I have no problem with the joy itself of the paradigm shift. Like, I find that really energizing and really inspiring. Um, but thinking about how I can take it back to me and how I can make this about my journey and what I can learn... Honestly, I just see it as a massive chance to celebrate, like balloon emoji, party emojis, fucking champagne emoji, mate. That is how I feel. Um, I love my path. It is so fulfilling to me. Um, Elise said in her testimonial that her relationships that she had with the goddesses were always distant. There was something about them that was not close. It was not helpful. And I'm so glad that she's found a connection now um, that she feels that she needed with a disembodied intelligence that is helpful and it is feeding her and it is giving her something. I am so relieved and so happy to say that my relationships with goddess are invigorating. They are interactive. They are gorgeous. They are positive they are uplifting they are elevating i am happy to say that everything that i do at my altar everything that i write in my book of mirrors is transformative and awesome for me i am happy to take this as a moment to celebrate the fact that i am in the right place and finally elise is in the right place too so happy days we're all winner winner chicken dinner and so with that being said darlings i'm gonna get the fuck out of dodge because i've got loads to do um so much love and i'll look forward to reading your comments down below and blessed be Thank you.